Hey guys, don't forget that I'm giving away two bully packs to celebrate 2,000 subscribers on my channel. Watch the video or hit the link in the description to find out how you can enter. What is up, my dudes? Hope you are having an amazing weekend, whatever it is, where you are right now. If you're watching this video on a weekday, hope you're having an amazing day. Today, we are talking about some player suggestions that you guys would like to see added to the game. Some time ago, I added you guys, asked you guys um, on Reddit what you would like to see in this game. And I sort of asked you guys to keep it constructive and you were actually so good at it. For those of you who don't know, there's a big subreddit for Crossout. It's just, yeah, r dash crossout and you get there and there's a lot of good talking going on and all that stuff in there so 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 go look at it and i will post a link to the uh, original post that i made down in the comment section or the description depends anyways i feel like we should just um sort of get into what you guys have suggested basically i asked you what would you like to see changed in the game if you were to make a change to this game um, and you guys have been just throwing out so many good suggestions and I sort of cooked it down to the best ones that I like the most and he, yeah here we are there's 13 suggestions total and there's a lot of good ones like we are gonna cover something like quality of life from server lists to PvP rewards to new game modes to new weapons to buff nerf buff weapons whatever you want to say um, but yeah, let's just uh, let's just get on with the video. Let's get to the first suggestion. So the first suggestion is made by Canadian Hawko, and he actually made three really good suggestions. So I'm gonna cover them all. The first suggestion is Bedlam Server Browser. He wants to browse through Bedlam servers in order to play with your friends. You can actually join Bedlam with friends right now, but the problem is that mostly you're put in a new Bedlam server if you join as a squad, so the server will be pretty empty. Therefore, this suggestion makes it easier to join a Bedlam with friends and still have it populated by other players. A really nice suggestion in my opinion and we definitely need server lists to join with your friends. The next suggestion is Control Sheem Layouts, also by Canadian Hawko. Um, and basically what he, what he wants to do is um, he, wants to ha he wants to have uh, multiple control layouts so you can save those and load them at any time. Uh, and this is made for when switching between sideways and non-sideways hover builds. And yes, the sideways hover thing wasn't meant to exist, but the devs are not going to look into changing it. So. Why not just embrace it a bit and make life just a little bit easier for everybody playing sideways? Also, if you have different controls, depending on what weapon composition you play, you might also want to have this available to you. The next suggestion is making the Mandrake ch aim change again, because yes, we did just have a patch update, but that wasn't really good enough, in my opinion. And this is also by Canadian Hawko. Um, and my dude, he surely knows how to improve quality of life for us players, that is for sure. Like, this final suggestion is to change the way that Mandrake aims. The aim is still pretty weird. It's hard to tell if your shots are even, like, close to your enemy, especially if you are just a tiny bit new to the weapon or new to the map that you're playing. Like, you both have to master the weapon and you have to master the map as well. So, what he suggests is a sort of an indicator on the map that will help us which most artillery in other games already have so you can just just about see on the minimap where your shots will land really nice suggestion the next suggestion is a harvester change made by oh this is a hard name <laughs> can't skin 1997 change harvester energy to five and make sparks do 50 percent less damage do note that this suggestion was made before the newest patch 0.10.50 i do think indeed agree with changing the harvest to 5 energy. I also feel like the harvester should be somewhat revamped to what it was before. I think it's weird that the weapon only synergizes with the spark, like devs did finally actually nerf the damage output in a way that you can kill melee players again, but I want the harvester to be an independent weapon, therefore I, I stand behind the, behind the suggestion of increasing the energy to 5, and in my opinion they should also raise the power score of the harvester. So basically, He's just 5 energy, make this bike do 50% less damage. And yeah, I just think that we need even more than that. Then we have a power score scaling rewards, a suggestion made by Sigma920. A pretty interesting suggestion actually, but one 
um, the players have upvoted a lot on Reddit. So this is a suggestion. The increase should be treated as a gamble, where you get X amount of chance of getting 50% increased resources after a match. So if you play at 8k, you might have 15% chance of getting a 50% increased resource bonus. Now, this is a pretty good suggestion, but the game already has a pretty sketchy gambling system where crates seem to be way too unbalanced. So the system would need a certain amount of transparency to work, in my opinion. But it's indeed a great suggestion to kill some of the grind in the game, which needs to be reduced, in my opinion, and in Sigma's opinion as well. Next suggestion is remove radar detectors, and this suggestion is made by Forgiven12. Um, basically, the suggestion is as following. Rework radar detectors. Either have them removed or at a highly reduced range. The argument is that it makes the game way too boring because it acts like a wall hack. Imagine if, like, CSGO told you that someone was about to peek a corner. That's basically wall hack. And while I do agree that this is a big advantage to have a radar detector on the team, it's something both teams can exploit. The game is built on modern war technology and radars that detect vehicles is a common thing in the real world. The game offers a great counter to radar detectors as well, with the chameleon, so... But removing the radar detector would indeed open up some new opportunities in the game. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this suggestion. Next suggestion coming up is Clan Wars like gameplay for everyone made by Forgiven12. Uh, the next suggestion is something that I can personally really get behind, like Forgiven argues that Clan Wars is an exclusive mode for in-game players. A way to fix this would be to make brackets for total power score split across the team, just like we see in tournaments. I think that's a great idea. I just don't think it should be seen as a part of actual Clan Wars. But if you guys played the game around half a year ago, you know that Gaijin introduced squad mode, which was a really nice 4 vs 4 squad mode. Basically clan wars just without rewards. I would love to see squad mode back on the table, like it was so unique and if it was brought back with a unique ranking system with power score brackets to make players able to rank up in different brackets, that would be so cool. I indeed do think we need a new competitive system for players not being able to play Clan Wars, but it needs its own unique reward system, like a big pile of scrap, wires, whatever, just something to help out players, just not something that will touch the meta too much, but still make like competitive play possible at lower power score. Next suggestion is raids are boring and difficult. <laughs> Astro Fox made this suggestion dash statement because I think this is more of a statement than a suggestion, a suggestion, but I really do have to agree on it. They need to cut down the amount of grinding for just one epic item. We have to sit through 60 games of wire farming afterwards, we have to do 15 raids in order to get the needed plastic. At the end, we also need scrap, we need cover, we need a bunch of blue items, and let's not forget the fee uh, to use the workbench. Like, the bar for entering this game is simply too high at the moment. And personally, I am really afraid that this is gonna scare away a lot of new players, which we do need if this game has to survive. Next suggestion is new game modes, made by Downside190. This guy wants new game modes, and I just wanna say amen to that. He, just, he suggests King of the Hill. I would suggest something like capture the flag where a runner, etc. would be needed. I just agree that we need new game modes. People rarely even focus on use on the objective right now. So bringing back game modes that are actually useful, that would be so cool. The next suggestion is coming from Agnostic Dragon, and he, say, he is saying that Tagless Perk is a debuff rather than a buff. That's actually a really, really interesting suggestion to change that buff, because I do agree that the Tagless need to rework. At the moment, it is just a defender with a different model and a perk, but the perk does indeed seem like a debuff more than anything else. You are punished if you decide to fire back at the enemy. Especially since the last update showed us how long the perk is inactive after firing. You're basically only rewarded if you are looking at the enemy instead of shooting back at them. The protector holds a perk that the tackler should have had. So what do you guys suggest for a perk? Let me know down below in the comments. Next suggestion is more environmental variables made by Rather Nerdy. This next suggestion is to give us shifting time periods on maps, like having maps both at night and day variant, and also the environment should be able to be destroyed. Just imagine this, all the buildings in Old Town collapsing after a huge Mandrake strike. How cool would that be? In my opinion, pretty goddamn cool. 
The next suggestion is dynamic power of weapons if you seal club. As this is a rather complex suggestion, I will tell you guys about it but refrain from commenting on it myself. The vid would end up being like an hour long if we had to discuss it from one way to the other. The suggestion is made by Achelius. Achelius suggests that weapon powers should be scaling depending on the cabin you use. If you use a white weapon on an epic cabin, the weapon gets a 30% durability increase. If you, on the other hand, decide to go for porcupines on a growl cabin, you get a minus 95, minus 35 is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> durability decrease. That way, weapons would be better suited for the PS they are brought into and make them stronger or weaker, depending on the power score that they are in. It is a pretty interesting suggestion, so I advise you to go to Reddit and read the full suggestion for yourself if you are actually interested in this and you want to hear more about it or maybe back it up. The final suggestion of this video is we need craftable pack items. This suggestion is made by gentle, gentlest Sir Gibbles. <laughs> He addresses that we, out of 16 epic cabins, only are able to craft 6. Some of them are super hard to get, just look at this Stabby Spider. I do realize, I realize that devs need the money they can make from packs, but I also do heavily agree that we need pack items to be craftable. At least some of the caps that are rather meta-defining need to be like craftable. Imagine the price of an icebox in a year or two. Maybe this can be fixed by introducing a workbench for retired packs. I don't know. What do you guys think? But that is basically it for today's video and all of these suggestions. Let me know what you think about them and drop a comment down below if you have any other suggestions that you think should be a part of this game. Just keep it constructive because that is way much easier for anybody in this game to actually do something, something about it than if you are like just somewhat constructive about it. Thank you for watching this video boys if you enjoyed it do let me know down below as well because if we get a lot of response in this video i will surely make another one because there is a lot of posts on reddit that i couldn't cover today because the video would simply get too long so if you enjoyed this i will gladly do a part two until next time have an awesome day guys bye